This is Yusuf. <coughs> I'm completely unprepared to make this video, but that's usually the best way to do it. <laughs> Just woke up. We should have made this last night, but the camera didn't work um, through all the times that I tried it. The The perspective that I have and many other Orthodox Christians have on Protestantism is that we look to these people who the Protestants seem to think are very wise, great theologians or know a lot about Christianity and do debates um, or write a lot of books. We see, I mean, I, I see people like Douglas Wilson, who gets things dead wrong about orthodoxy. I mean, just not, I mean, like, just facts that just no, not no. If you had looked, if you had taken 20 minutes at the longest, you would find out, no, that's not, that's not the case. Um, and then him using the word, I mean, his, his use of the word Pelagianism is indefensible. Um, I keep talking to people who try to give him the benefit of the doubt, who still disagree with him, what he's talking about, but try to give him the benefit of the doubt on it. Um, if you hear somebody say, well, free markets and, you know, limited government, that's just flat out, that's just flat out Maoist Marxism. You would, what, you would cock your head and be like, what? Um, he uses Pelagianism, something that I suspect 99% of the Protestants don't know, and maybe 100% of the Evangelicals don't know anything about. The Church Fathers are alien to these people. Or they'll try to read the Church Fathers to understand Orthodoxy, which I find, I, which we look at and we go, what are you doing? Um, and, I mean, the, I just, just, he's trying, he's, he's, he's talking to people who he thinks he can get away with it. Especially when he talks about Orthodoxy, it's, it's flat out appalling. Uh, Matt Spann, who Bishop Lazar, I mean, has done hours worth of material just debunking, just sentence after sentence, just things that, things that are opposite. It, like, comparative to statements like, well, you know, the Catholic Church believes that, you know, this woman who's the Pope, who runs the church from Nigeria, it, you would be... Whoa, hold on a second. But since we are so alien to the Protestants, and Protestantism is so alien to what we view as Christianity, um, there's a huge divide. There's a language divide, too. Um, but when I see people like Doug Wilson, or John Piper say Doug Wilson, oh, he's an intelligent man, honest. Well, he's not honest. I've pointed that out in videos, not honest, not honest, man. Not intelligent either. Because how much, how much high, great education does he have and all the books that he's written? And just a plain old Orthodox person like myself can just destroy him. And no, nobody has stood up to defend what he said. There had been people, Protestants, who had asked me, well, what is Pela who was Pelagius? a good one. So John Pike, and I've heard many evangelicals who, there's some things that I've heard that I said that, oh man, they're dead on about that, you know, and they attack televangelists, and they support people like Douglas Wilson, or James White, who believes in, what, totum scriptorum, or whatever he calls it, it's, it's very funny, totality of scripture, 
all scripture is equal. This is the same person that points to the church fathers for most of his material. Um, Ignatius of Antioch didn't view it that way. He said the Old Testament's good, but the New Testament's better. Um, obviously, Second Peter, Jude, Book of Revelations were disputed, and people weren't willing to trust them to the same degree as uh, Paul or the Gospels. Uh, to that extent, the book of James. Um, as I demonstrated in my last video, uh, the Sola Scriptura, you have a huge problem with that because of what got chopped off of the Old Testament and what got put into the New Testament. And um, passages that are in every single Bible, every single English translation of the Bible, that were added hundreds of years after the book of John was written, after the book of Mark was written. Church added them. When people say, well, the pastoral epistles weren't written by Paul, I don't, their Orthodox Church says, okay. But that's what the church picked to represent its view. They were correct in everything. We, they endorsed the church's view. They were correct in everything they said. That's how we see it. Um, when we see people like James White, Douglas Wilson, uh, John Piper, and these, these are, these are, oh wow, these are great guys. Um, Yet they can be slapped down by any ordinary orthodox. And that's the thing, is that the, <coughs> the cult of personality is what keeps Christianity. Oh, you, I mean, you got to hear, my, you gotta hear my, my minister. you got to come to my church to hear my minister. You gotta, that's why people ask me, well, what, what, uh, what, which, church should I, which church should I go to? I said, the one closest to you, the parish closest to you. Well, how do I know if it's a good, good church? Because the priest is just any ordinary old priest. He's not the center. It's not a show. You are worshiping in the same manner. as I mean, the any of the changes that might have occurred in the liturgy stopped at the 5th century. I'd say 4th, but I'm going to say 5th. Done. During Lent, the use of some of Gregory Dialogus is used, who's from uh, the 6th century. That's for a small period and in little parts. So you're, you're worshiping as Christians did down through the ages, continually. Now in the West, they, changed, they started just changing things willy-nilly. Uh, but how these people can defend sola scriptura yet hold to um, original sin, uh, penal substitution. Uh, if you let the Bible speak for itself, most of Protestant, Protestantism's the, um, systematic theology falls apart because there's no systematic theology. Say so what the church has believed always. The words of Hezekiah are equal to that of Christ. That's what we're supposed to believe. Um, and, I mean, I don't know, devoid of any substance. These people who don't, I mean, there's, no, there's nothing common. It's every man for himself. Is that how the church is? It's every, well, however you want to, you interpret this, and as, as, as long as you say Jesus is God and that he died for your sins and that you're saved, then you're a Christian. Um, beyond that, you can have any interpretation. You can have any view of communion. You can have any view of anything. And this is, this is the Christian church. It's, you can't point and say that community is, is Christian. That one's not um, is that how the church operates?
if you believe the church was um, this, this was destructed and fell into apostasy uh, after in, in a, around the year 100, which is what the Mormons and the Jehovah's Witness and to some degree Seventh Day Adventists and some Adventist fraction factions believe. Um, you have no leg to stand on because people could say that 150 years ago and get away with it. They can't do it anymore. Um, I mean, Protestants, to be in the least bit consistent, have to go up to um, the Council of Nicaea. And the Reformers, no, I don't know of one modern theologian that's in agreement with any of the Reformers. That's why they say, oh, Martin Luther, John Calvin... You are not in agree. You do not follow what they believe. That that's that's what's jaw dropping. People say, "Well, research it." Well, I have, and then I look out at the landscape of American Christianity. Um, talk about the incarnation, and they they think what? When that's the. I mean. What they they see us so alien and strange, and I can I know why. And we look at them and go, you guys, you guys are picking up this book and reading it and then saying, I'm part of the church. If you were in ancient Israel, if you were, if you, if you had found access to some of the writings of Moses and you picked it up and then you said, well, I'm a, ch I'm the child of Israel. I'm, I'm, I'm one of the children of Israel. Or would you have to go to Israel? and follow their prophets? Or would you be able to pick up the Torah and try to combat Isaiah? And since there's, there's no mention of an afterlife in, um, in the Torah, you can start to, well, Daniel was a liar. Where is this resurrection? He's a liar. He's, you know, how, how dare they, when they have a line of prophets and you start disagreeing, is, is that possible? No, the Torah is the final revelation of God. God's Holy Spirit doesn't speak anymore. <clears throat> or, <clears throat> or to believe that the Holy Spirit stopped talking at uh, whenever the last piece, of the, whenever the last apostle died, and then started speaking again to people with no definite, to various people with no definite boundaries who are in diametrical positions against each other. The church is split. The church is a divided house. Because if you look at Western, I mean, that's why we look at, we look at the Western Protestantism and who, Calvinists will accept, or Presbyterians, Baptists, Methodists, they'll all look, oh, well, you're Christian. But then on some very hardcore dogmatic and doctrinal views, they'll oppose each other. And I've heard even evangelicals say, well, we don't have any dogmas. Dogma is a Roman Catholic thing. You don't have dogma? <laughs> even the Buddhists have dogma. You have no dogma. When we hear something like that, uh, Orthodox is a systematic dogma. It's like we don't have systematic theology. We just believe what was given us. Um, there's no structures built. We don't try to build up or find new ideas. There's no new ideas to be found. Except those that were revealed. Um, there's no proof texting either. People say, well, I mean, trying to build ideas out of proof texting is... is I mean is another puzzling aspect to this. So when I see when I see that I can cut apart when I mean not even cut apart just flat up boom. Douglas Wilson lied. I might have called him Doug, Douglas Murray because I like Douglas Murray. Um who's no longer a Christian. Um Douglas Wilson lied. James White can be just chopped into uh and John Piper uh, is not allowed to agree, agree with Douglas Wilson, and I've heard him endorse, um, what's that guy's name? 
the guy with Mars Church. The one that wrote Love, Rob Bell. All of these people are Christians. The Holy Spirit. I, it, it doesn't seem, you, it, it's indefensible. That's our view. This is why it's so puzzling. Just an explanation from us, or just from 